What's going on guys? Jay Hoy back with you today. Wow, I haven't made a video like this in a while. As today we're playing some NHL 20. I'm not exactly sure what game of this is. Obviously it's Hockey Ultimate Team, uh, but I'm not sure if it's you know normal online seasons or Hut Rivals or whatever. But it's something to do with Hut. And uh, you know we got a pretty good game for you in the background as we take over in that one. Uh, but today, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be talking about the blockbuster trade that just happened between the New Jersey Devils and the Arizona Coyotes. And uh, personally, let me just say, I didn't really see this one coming. And uh, I knew most likely, if anything were to happen, it would probably be closer to the deadline, you know, in a month or two. Uh, but not kind of right in the, you know, what are we at, like 30 games played or something like that. You know, we, we can't really, you know, tell what exactly it's going to mean for, for both teams, uh, especially when uh, we get into the, the nitty gritty of this trade. Uh, but let's start with it. What is the trade? So we got going to Arizona, we have forward Taylor Hall with 50% of his contract retained. He was making $6 million. That was retained in half, 50% to $3 million. Along with Hall goes forward Blake Spears, who was playing in the AHL at the time. Uh, we'll get into what these guys are all doing and what roles they play in a minute. Uh, but back to New Jersey goes forward prospect Nick Merkley. Forward prospect Nathan Scar. I don't really know how to pronounce this guy's name, but Skinar, I don't really know. Probably just, I don't know. Uh, defensive prospect Kevin Ball. And then a 2020 first round pick and a 2021 conditional third. Okay, so let's just start off with uh, the front of this trade. So we got Taylor Hall, obviously the, the star in this trade. So he is a first line left wing top line player um, that, you know, has put up a, what was it, 93 point season, uh, you know, when he was actually playing at his peak and, and the Devils themselves were playing, uh, you know, actually well which is not something I would describe this season by uh, but he actually came over to New Jersey in the uh, one for one trade uh, Adam Larson uh, for a haul which was questionable to begin with uh, but obviously top line player this year 30 or 30 games played he's got 25 points so playing on a bad team I mean it's still really good obviously he was the top uh, point getter in New Jersey this year and uh, you know he's kind of bounced around the lineup which was really weird because usually your top scorer is on your top line but uh, apparently that wasn't the case for New Jersey and uh, you know when they did make that move for him to actually go down to that I think it was the third line uh, that's right before they actually fired their head coach which was uh, you know a long time coming honestly uh, but yeah, Halt, obviously top line player. I could say enough about him, but young, uh, relatively young. I think he's like 29 or something like that. Uh, so still relatively young, kind of in the prime of his career. Uh, wants to play for a winner. And uh, coming from Edmonton and then going to New Jersey, uh, you know, he just hasn't been in that position. Uh, but then also going to Arizona in this deal is Blake Spears. Uh, Blake Spears was playing in uh, New Jersey's AHL team, Binghamton. Uh, and basically, he got pushed out of the lineup by a bunch of other young players uh, that were performing a little bit better than him. Uh, but so far this year, he played in 10 games and had one point. So uh, nothing really too crazy with Spears there. But uh, he's like 22 years old, still got time to grow. And uh, hopefully when he goes to Tucson over there, he can uh, maybe rejuvenate his game and, uh, and get something going there. Uh, but now over to what New Jersey gets in this one. We have forward Nick Merkley. He is a forward. He's a center slash right wing. Uh, he, this year so far, 26 games played, uh, 16 points. Uh, but if you look back at what he's done in the AHL, he's been consistently getting better every year and producing you know, pretty good points for the AHL. Uh, and I don't believe he's really played a lot in the NHL if he has at all. Uh, but he is going to be reporting to Binghamton in the AHL for New Jersey and uh, will probably help out their forward crew down there. Uh, second of all, we got Nate Scar. I don't, again, don't know how to pronounce it, but he's another forward. I believe he's going to be a centerman. I believe he's only going to be a centerman, though, not like a slash right wing or anything. Uh, but so far this year, 22 games played, and he has nine 
points. So nothing really too crazy with him, but again, another young player. I believe he's either a second or former second or third round pick. Uh, Merkley, former first round pick, I believe. Uh, but then over on to the third prospect in this one, Kevin Ball, uh, a left-hand defenseman still playing in the juniors in the Ontario Hockey League uh, with the Ottawa 67s. Uh, this joins, it actually makes it the fourth prospect that New Jersey has in the Ottawa 67s organization. Uh, but this year, so far, 28 games played, 20 points. And uh, also to mention, 6-6. Six, six. So obviously a big defenseman. Uh, you know, usually when you see big defensemen, you probably would assume more defensive minded, more physical, uh, but in this case, it looks like he can bring some offense with him as well. Uh, but he, like I said, is in the OHL still, so as far as the plan for him, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but then also on to this, we have a 2020 first round pick uh, from Arizona that is top three lottery protected, uh, but given how Arizona is going this year, uh, that shouldn't really be a problem. Um, it, I mean, they're doing well. Uh, most likely, they're not going to just all of a sudden drop off, uh, especially with the new addition of Taylor Hall. Uh, but if it was uh, to, if that pick was to be in the top three, it would slide to 2021 as a unprotected pick. Uh, so no matter what happened next year, it would be, uh, you know, a first round pick next year. Uh, but then the conditional third. Now, this is where it gets weird. And I'm going to try to explain this as best as possible. And obviously, you guys can see the screenshots on your screen to try to explain this as best as I can. So, it does say conditional third round pick. However, it's basically, you can either pick it as whatever you want. Uh, but it, the conditions of this pick are, it gets upgraded to a 2021 first round pick if... Arizona re-signs Taylor Hall and wins a playoff round. Not the Stanley Cup, just one playoff round. They would get another first round pick. Okay, so then New Jersey would get a second round pick if only one of those things happen. So if he re-signs or they win a playoff round. So if they win a playoff round and he doesn't re-sign with them, then they only get a second round pick. But if neither of those things happen, so if Taylor Hall goes to free agency, and they don't make it to the playoffs or don't win the first round, they would just get a third round pick. So it all depends on what happens as far as the re-sign status and playoffs. Uh, so that obviously all depends on if Arizona makes the playoffs and if they re-sign Taylor Hall. So what does this mean for both teams? I mean, obviously Taylor Hall, we know, is a top line player. Um, I believe he was playing alongside of Phil Kessel and somebody else in his first game, so uh, that's automatically first or first uh, first line for them. So that creates you know a nice hopefully one-two punch for them. Uh, it gives them a, at least a rental for this year. As there was no extension talks in uh, the trade, I guess I'll call it. That's why that conditional third is so big and so many conditions into it. Uh, so that's something I will have to watch out for if he does, you know, start heating up with a, an extension. But most likely, I could see him going to free agency only because, you know, Arizona's, I'm just going to say it, they have, uh, I don't want to say a fluke year, but, you know, they haven't really been great for a while. So I kind of doubt that he would want to stay in Arizona. He probably wants to get some big money out of free agency and uh, go to more of a contender on a consistent basis. And, uh, and go and make whatever other team, you know, a consistent contender every single year. Um, and then, you know, all the prospects, obviously, we'll have to see, you know, wait and see what all those guys bring to the table. Uh, but, you know, th uh, three out of the four of them are playing in the AHL, so they'll go there, do whatever they do, and, uh, and move on. Uh, and then Kevin Ball being the only exception here that is still in the OHL, so he's still relatively young. I believe he's 19. So he's still got time there. He's still got time to grow. And uh, like I said, it you know adds to uh, what the Devils are trying to do right now. Get prospects. Get good young players. And try to just build around those guys. Uh, but for New Jersey, what it means losing Taylor Hall now. Uh, basically, the only thing it means is now you have a couple more prospects. You have a couple more picks. And you're losing a superstar player that you can't really regain anytime soon because now 
You trade away your star player, which means you're in a rebuild. We've known this. They've made it to the playoffs once since John Hines was hired, and they got first rounded. So, you know, there's not really any significant value there. And then their head coach is gone, so now they're going to be looking for a new coach uh, going into next year. I would assume they're not going to re-sign their interim head coach, who's there right now. And now you're left with a bunch of young guys that can't really fill that role because you basically just had the top line and then nobody else. So what it means is opportunity for some other players, but you know no one is really... I don't want to say capable, but no one's really ready for that, I guess, opportunity that I've that we've seen so far this year. So, all in all, um, you know, I don't know. It all depends on where that those first-round picks ends up. And I almost kind of hope, for New Jersey's sake, that they uh, do resign Hall and they do win a playoff round. Uh, but then I don't because I don't think it would be best for, for Hall over in Arizona. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. But that was the video for today. Kind of recapping the Taylor Hall trade from Arizona or from New Jersey to Arizona. He actually did pick up a point in his first uh, game with them, uh, so that was interesting to see. Actually, had a beautiful play uh, from him. Uh, but that's gonna be it. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know what you guys think of this trade down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and as always, guys, we'll see you next time.